2,600 years ago, a man was walking, and he went and got himself sacrificed by a group of people. Why did they sacrifice him? We have no idea. But once they did, they chopped off his head and buried it in a hole, because that's what you do with a freshly severed head. So why did they actually bury the head? We still have no idea. But in 2008, when archaeologists found the head, they were met with a kinder surprise. In the skull, there was still a preserved brain. Hello Neuronauts, Cognic here, and in this video we're going to talk about the oldest human brains ever discovered by archaeologists. Obviously, all of these human brains were found inside human remains. There's a joke there because remains rhymes with brains, so like, human remains, human brains. Anyways, we're going to talk about two sets of human brains. First, we're going to talk about the Heslington brain the best preserved specimen of an ancient human brain. Then we'll talk about the Windover bodies, which were found in Brevard County, Florida, in the United States of America. So first, let's talk about the Heslington brain. Around 2,600 years ago, where Heslington, Yorkshire, England is today, a man was sacrificed or ritualistically murdered. So why was he sacrificed? We don't really know for sure, but around this time, a lot of Celts, and particularly their Druidic priests, conducted human sacrifices. Generally, the sacrificees were prisoners, but sometimes they would sacrifice innocent people when there weren't enough bad guys left to dispatch. They used to conduct these sacrifices in a whole bunch of really gruesome ways. For example, the Greek historian and geographer Strabo wrote that druid priests used to strike someone in the back with swords, and then would make prophecies about the future based on their death spasms. Sometimes they shot people with arrows, other times they impaled their temples, and once in a while they would build a huge straw figure and put people inside before lighting it on fire. Why? Now it's time to play my game show called Why Did These Sacrifices Happen? I'm gonna give you a word bank and then you have one guess to figure out why they killed people in all these gruesome, horrific ways. Your words are triangle, flower, and religion. Religion. It, always religion. The priests thought that these sacrifices brought them closer to the gods. The thing is, there's no evidence throughout all of history that human sacrifice ever worked, even if you ask the gods for more YouTube subscribers. Or so I've been told, or like researched or something. Anyways, to pull it back from that tangent, the guy got sacrificed. In this case, the man was hung by the neck, his head was removed with a knife, and then his head was immediately buried in the ground. In August of 2008, archaeologist Jim Williams came across the head when doing an archaeological dig. He found the head in a waterlogged pit, with the lower jaw and the first two vertebrae still attached. Another member of the team, Rachel Cubitt, was cleaning the skull later when she realized there was something loose inside of it. She looked inside the skull and saw a yellow substance, which reminded her of one of her archaeology classes. The class was about the rare discovery of preserved brain tissue in ancient specimens, and so because she suspected this was a brain, she immediately brought it for medical examination. The head belonged to a man between the ages of 26 and 45. It was discovered that there really was a brain inside, and it was in large fragments. The brain had also shrunk to about 20% of its original size. There was some loose sediment mixed in, but the brain had very few signs of decay, and was in extremely good condition. You could even make out surface anatomical features just by looking at it. The brain was in such good condition that they could actually sequence the DNA in the brain. The man was found to have mitochondrial DNA haplogroup J1D, which had never been seen in Britain in either living or dead individuals. A haplotype is a group of genes that are all inherited from a single parent, because they're on one chromosome. As I mentioned before, the man had haplogroup J1D, which is much more common in the Middle East. Maybe the man was of Middle Eastern descent, or maybe haplogroup J1D was actually really common in Britain at that time and was bred out of the population through genetic drift. The interesting thing about the Heslington brain is how well it was preserved. Usually, even if a dead body is placed in cold storage, the brain begins to liquefy within a few days. It's one of the first organs to decompose, so how was the Heslington brain preserved so well? Three conditions had to be met for this to occur. First, the soil had to have very little oxygen. Second, the head had to be chopped off of the body right after death. And third, the proteins had to be very bunched up in the brain. Because the soil had so little oxygen, aerobic bacteria, which need oxygen, couldn't survive inside of that soil and therefore around and inside the brain. 
Also, when a body decomposes, the bacteria from your gut actually consume your body from the inside out. Because the head was quickly removed from the body, gut bacteria didn't have a chance to make it up and start consuming those parts of the body. The head was buried separately away from these gut bacteria very quickly in conditions that were not fit for bacteria to survive. The proteins were bunched up and folded tightly into these clumps, and so the bacteria that did manage to make it into the brain couldn't really consume that organic material, it was too tightly bound. When you add all of these conditions together, you get the Heslington brain, the best preserved specimen of a brain from ancient times. The Heslington brain was 2,600 years old. So is it the oldest specimen of a human brain that we've ever recovered? Actually, no, because that title goes to the Windover bodies. In Brevard County, Florida, USA, there's a muck pond. A muck pond is a pond where the soil at the bottom is made of organic matter, maybe plants and animal bits, that have decomposed. These organic bits are so well decomposed that they're unidentifiable, so we just call the sediment that they make up muck. In 1982, there were plans to build a road across the pond for a new housing development called Windover Farms. What a happy name. When construction started, one of the backhoe operators found something a little bit strange in the pond. He took a big scoop of muck out of the pond with his backhoe, and there was just a few skulls in it, like three or four, a few. I can imagine the headlines read something like, Florida man finds skulls in his backhoe bucket. Good old Florida. Florida authorities confirmed that the skulls were not from any recent murders, so that's good. Construction still stopped though, and the company building the road decided to contact some archaeologists. Just like with the Heslington brain, the archaeologists used radiocarbon dating to figure out how old the bones were. Radiocarbon dating uses the proportions of different carbon isotopes to determine how old a sample is. The archaeologists found that these Florida bones were seven to 8,000 years old. To excavate the remaining bodies and bones, the archaeologists had to dig through waterlogged soil. They described the experience as trying to dig chocolate mousse underwater. Ew. 168 individuals were discovered, some of them just bones, but some of them more well preserved. See, the bodies were buried in a sort of peat bog. Peat bogs include a type of soil that has highly acidic water, low temperature, and a lack of oxygen. Together, these things can preserve bodies, but with highly tanned skin like leather. Huh. Sort of like some alive people in Florida. The buried individuals ranged in age, from 1 to 60 years old. The causes of death were many, ranging from disease to old age to combat. One man was found with a bone spear stuck in his pelvis. Ow! But hey, what does that have to do with brains? Well, in late 1984, the researchers found some skulls that had preserved brain tissue in them. When the skulls were opened, there was lumps of this brownish, greasy material. The researchers sent skulls that hadn't yet been opened to get CT, X-ray, and MRI scans. They could actually recognize some of the brain parts in there. Even cooler, under a microscope you could still see some of the cellular structure, like neurons. Because the individuals had been buried in this particular peat, 90% of the bodies had preserved brain tissue. The state of the brain tissue told researchers that the bodies had been buried 24 to 48 hours after death. Just like with the Heslington brain, the tissue was well enough preserved that they could conduct DNA sequencing. The researchers were able to determine that these individuals were of Asian genetic origin, meaning that they were similar to many other native North American peoples. The buried individuals had a very rare haplotype called Haplotype X. Hey babe, can I start a band called Haplotype X? Haplotype X is found all over the world, but it originated some 30,000 years ago. The cool thing is, it's only present in 3% of Native North Americans. The DNA also told us that this was a family burial site. It was used by the same family for over 100 years. These are the oldest specimens we have of human brains uncovered from ancient times. As I said, these bodies were seven to 8,000 years old, which is 3,500 years before the pyramids of Giza were built. That's it for this video, but if you made it this far, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. It really helps me out and it makes my day to see new subscribers on the channel. If you learned something new and you have time, consider liking this video and leaving a comment down below. All that stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of your brains, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.